From the time that you open the hangar doors until you put the plane away at the end of the day, the wind plays a major role in each and every flight and greatly affects the performance of our aircraft. It influences how the aircraft will handle during takeoff and landing, the distance needed for both, and what we'll experience once we're airborne. So it's obvious to see why knowing what the wind is doing is so important. At larger airports, the air traffic control tower or the flight service station will provide information about wind speed and direction. The windsock is a prime indicator as well. Horizontal windsock, 15 knots or above. Five degrees below horizontal, 10 knots. 30 degrees below horizontal, six knots. But if your flying takes you off the beaten path, there are other ways to assess the wind conditions. Trees, bushes, smoke, flags, and even wave patterns on water will provide information about wind speed and direction. And for the winds aloft, Drifting clouds can indicate the direction and speed that may be expected. So once you know what the wind's doing, what do you do with the information? Taking off and landing into the wind will ensure optimal control and runway usage. For crosswinds, your aircraft has a maximum limit and it can be found in most pilots' operating handbooks. But keep in mind these figures are based on tests conducted by a professional test pilot, so just because your aircraft can handle a certain crosswind speed doesn't necessarily mean that you can. In the air, a tailwind will get you to your destination faster. A headwind will mean that your ground speed will be slower and you'll use more fuel. These are important things to keep in mind when you're planning your flight and managing your fuel. We can't see wind, but we can experience its effects. We don't necessarily need sophisticated instruments to tell us what direction or how fast that it's moving. The answer is blowing in the wind. <laughs> 